It is tomato season here in Los Angeles, and I have one of my favorite tomatoes of all time. This is called a green zebra heirloom tomato. I saw this at the farmer's market probably 11, 12 years ago. And one of the things that's amazing right now is we don't have a season of tomatoes that's a one month or two months. These are going to be in season here in California up until Thanksgiving, okay, which is unbelievable. And when I first saw these at the market, um, I instantly fell in love with the color of them, the flavor of them. I thought they were so unusual. They looked very different than any other tomato that I've seen before. And actually, at one point, I actually tried growing these one time, which was great. Uh, I didn't have a lot of success with them, but they're just a cool tomato. And I love making mojitos. One of the first drinks I made with these was a, a very just a straight straight mojito but adding a tomato instead of anything else so tomato as you know is a fruit it's not a vegetable so it's juicy it's very fruit like so what i want to show you today is a really really simple recipe to make a clear gazpacho so we're basically we're making a tomato water we're gonna we're gonna uh, vitamix it or blend it we're gonna strain it it comes out to a clear liquid and then we mix it with sparkling wine or champagne uh, it's a really simple drink and it's got a lot of flavor and I think also it's just it's a very magical experience for people. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these tomatoes. You don't have to worry about taking the stems off of them because we're going to strain everything. So what I do is I pretty much fill the Vitamix up first halfway with the tomatoes. And listen, you can add herbs into this. You can put different fresh herbs into it, but I've just got to the point where I just like putting just garlic, salt, and tomatoes. I love the tomato flavor coming through. So we're going to put a little bit of garlic in there. Usually I put maybe uh, two pieces off of a clove, right? <clears throat> and you don't have to chop it up. I'm just taking the skin off. You just can put it in whole like that. So you can literally just crush down on it and put it in there. And the really important ingredient this is salt. I'm just using Malden sea salt flakes, but you can use any kind of salt. What the salt really does is the salt is what's going to force the water out of the tomatoes. So that's really, really important. So I usually do that in the middle, and then I'll add another bunch of tomatoes on top. Again, these are just really, really beautiful tomatoes. I love them. You can make sauce with these. You, these are great steamed and roasted as well. And this, of course, if you don't have these, most tomatoes will work, um, but you never know. You might get lucky because I know, I know they're getting more and more popular. I'll put a little bit more uh, salt on top, and then we're going to Vitamix it. And just all you're trying to do, you don't have to blend it for very long. You're just trying to get it all mixed up so that there's no pulp, there's no uh, big chunk. <laughs> Is it this takes a few seconds now I have this strainer here you could have a, any kind of strainer but you do want something that is kind of a fine mesh and I, I like using some kind of container that I can drip it into now listen there's all kinds of fancy things you can get you can get a super bag you can use coffee filters too, large coffee filters if you had a small batch of this you probably we could just strain it in this coffee thing but what I'm gonna do is just to make it easy and I know that you can find this is we're just going to take a couple of paper towel, which is great. It obviously, it doesn't look so sophisticated, but it actually works fantastic. Because all we need to do is strain this. So I'll usually put about two pieces in. I'll cover it like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the tomatoes and we're going to slowly pour them in. Then what's going to happen is that's going to strain through. It, it can take up to an hour, two hours, sometimes even longer. But we're going to pour this really, really slowly. And what we're going to do is it's going to start to create the water. So you want to make sure that it's not, that this amount is not going into, it's actually straining through the paper towel. So you can see that, right? And if I look down, sometimes if a lot of the initial sauce will be coming off, you can see that. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll actually, while this is dripping, I'll actually pour that initial amount out. It's always going to happen. You're always going to have a little bit of that initial pulp. But as you can see what I'm holding now, now it's clear. 
So what happens is you pour that a little bit out, and now just let this drip. And it's going to come out clear. And we'll let that go. So we've now dripped this. And look at this is a huge container that I've dripped it in. So there's actually a lot more liquid than you think it is. There's a lot. We're going to straight into this bottle. But look at how much has dripped out and how perfectly clear it is. And then you know what's good? If you're going to transfer it, just if you could transfer it to another container, just maybe that's still dripping a little bit so uh, you can not waste any of it. And then we're going to take this. Mm, just an amazing smell. And we're going to pour this in here. Now look at that. Look at how beautiful and clear that is. Obviously it has a little bit of the yellow and the green tinge, which is what the tomato is. But this is going to be so perfect in some sparkling wine. This is a great cocktail to use for brunch. It's an amazing cocktail to have with a meat dish uh, or something like that. But this is, one, this is one of my favorite things. And it's one of those things that, to me, when I see people's reaction to it, it's a real magical moment that they have. And that's what I love. Okay, so we've put this in here. And real simple. So <clears throat> you can use champagne flutes. It's fine as a champagne cocktail. I like to use different interesting glasses. A lot of times because I'm using this as kind of a tasting menu thing. So what I'm going to do, it's always equal parts of the clear gazpacho to sparkling water. So what we're going to do, the sparkling wine. So what we're going to do is I'm going to put one ounce of this in the glass. And then we're going to do one ounce of a sparkling wine. Listen to that snap. And just to make sure that the bubbles, I usually will turn it to the side. So I'll make sure that I'm not putting any foam in there, right? So it's pure, pure sparkling wine. And I pour it in softly. And now what I have is this beautiful thing. I'll just take a little bit. What I do is I just do a little stir. And then I like to have a garnish. I have this beautiful, this is all flowering marjoram that I'm starting to dry here, but some of it is still looking really plump and nice. So I like to take a nice little sprig of this, but you could put anything on top, but it, it's nice to put something, some kind of herb that would probably go with tomatoes. So basil would be great or oregano. And I just float that on top. And there we do. We've got the clear gazpacho with champagne. Take a little sip. Mm. Wow. It's just, oh. It's pure tomato and garlic. Now, the thing I recommend is I'm doing this fresh, right? But to optimize the sensation of this, what I would do in terms of making this cold is I would, after you would strain this, I'd probably put this in the refrigerator for a couple hours. Get this nice and cold, or pour, if you need to serve it quickly, put it on ice, get it chilled down, and then the temperature is perfect because you're not adding any ice to this. But this is a perfect brunch cocktail. It's super light, but what it is is it's super surprising. It really is one of the few things that I do that really, really has that instant magical um, feeling to it. So have fun with it. Enjoy. Cheers. And again. This is great for food, with food. Great. Mm. I have to tell you too. If you make a lot of this and you're not going to use it all the way, what I do is I like to put this in a container and I put it in the freezer. It's going to be good forever. So it's actually one of the few things I like to freeze. This and passion fruit, I'm okay with freezing, but this works really good in the freezer. So 